property. And we're going to cover a topic that is hopefully very timely for you, uh, the new and revised forms for June of 2019. There are going to be three new forms and a number of revisions. I'm just going to go over them quickly. Uh, the association's newsletter will cover most of these in more detail. So let me begin real quickly. Um, in June, uh, and I'm not sure of the exact date, uh, there are going to be three new forms issued uh, by the California Association of Realtors. One is a purchase agreement probate, probate update. As most of you know, there's already a probate purchase agreement, but a lot of agents apparently would prefer to use the RPA. So what they're going to do is create a, or they have created actually, a form that is an addendum to the RPA that has all the probate information that you would need. So you could use either the probate sales form or the RPA and then use this addendum, fill out the relevant portions, attach it to the RPA along with whatever forms and other documents you need and you have yourself a probate offer. Um, photography, videography, and copyright issues have become very important and very timely. A CAR is coming out with form a PVR, which is the photo and video release. It's a general release that you would use to protect yourselves from uh, uh, photographing images of property uh, uh, and uh, people uh, for marketing purposes related to the promotion of real estate by you. It, it's a good form uh, in light of all of the copyright and other privacy issues that seem to be very important right now. Um, recently, all of us have seen uh, the devastation caused by wildfires uh, all over the state of California. Uh, with those wildfires comes specific issues, particularly in certain areas. Uh, insurance issues, the availability of insurance, and other issues can become very important. Uh, on, uh, in June, uh, there will be a wildfire advisory, the WDFA. Um, those are the new forms for uh, June. There's a whole bunch of revisions. So I'm going to go over those with you quickly. Again, our newsletter will cover them in far greater depth. We have a seller's affidavit of non-foreign -for status, the AS. Uh, it will accommodate and clarify the procedures uh, for substituting a seller's tax in information without having to put some such information on the form. Uh, they're going to um, modify the AVID form, the Agent's Visual Inspection Disclosure, and there will be a new lock, uh, a new option uh, uh, checkbox for addendums. Some of you have office addendums uh, uh, or other types of addendums, and in order to accommodate those addendums, there will be a box you can check off if you're going to attach any type of addendum to your AVID form. Uh, one of the forms that I find very helpful in uh, risk management is the buyer's inspection election form, which is the BIE, and they're going to add some language indicating that it is the purpose of the form, the intended use, is between the buyer and the buyer's broker. It is not a contract document uh, to be used between the buyer and the seller. Um, the buyer is also instructed that they could lose whatever inspection rights they have if they don't act in a timely fashion. Another form that I find uh, particularly valuable in risk management is the buyer's inspection uh, waiver form or the BIW. The language is being added explaining that again the intended use of the form is between the uh, buyer and their uh, broker and agent. It is not a contractual form. Um, but there's another part of it that I find extremely valuable where sometimes additional inspections have been recommended by others. Uh, for example, a, a roof inspection has been recommended or a mold inspection, and the, the uh, buyer decides to waive those rights. Uh, again, uh, there's a, 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 a section being added that will indicate that is being done against the recommendation of experts. Um, the buyer non-agency agreement can be used with tenants, it's the BNA, uh, to make sure that uh, where uh, there is any question of whether you're representing a buyer or a tenant, uh, that you're not going to act as their agent, that they are being unrepresented, and that will be clarifying. Uh, that will be clarified in the new 
form. Uh, there's a form, the modification of listing by a representation or other agreement. Um, the MT, they're changing the title to make it easier to find the form in zip form. And they're adding a provision regarding commission negotiability uh, to ensure uh, that it is understandable uh, and enforceable. The notice of termination of tenancy form, or the NTT, is being changed to clarify the distinction between the use of a 30-day, a 60-day, or a 90-day. The delivery section is being modified to assure that whatever steps are required for service and substituted service are complied with. Uh, there was a form that came out in December called the Buyer Preoccupancy Storage Addendum, the POSA, B-O-S-A, and they're adding some language uh, uh, that will obligate the buyer to pay for damages caused uh, to, uh, to any uh, 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 seller real or personal property by virtue of that storage agreement. Again, a form that you should use very carefully because you're allowing the buyer to take possession of property, uh, even partially, uh, that has not yet closed. Uh, the representative capacity signature disclosure agreements are being reformatted, uh, whether it's the representative capacity for landlords the representative capacity for seller representatives or for tenant representatives uh, uh, as well as uh, for buyer representatives are all being reformatted to make it clear uh, uh, who is signing and on behalf of whom and that once that signature is given, uh, the requirements have been satisfied. On the RFR, the receipt for reports, they're going to add a paragraph so that if you are going to be using a tenant estoppel certificate, you'll have a box to check off. Uh, again, uh, if you're representing the buyer and the seller is a for sale by owner, or the landlord is representing him or herself, uh, that it is clear that if you are representing a tenant or a buyer, you are not representing the seller or the landlord, and that is the seller or landlord non-agency agreement. The trust advisory, the TA, is being reformatted so that the trustee need only sign once, even if the form is used uh, for listing and for purchase. Uh, there is a tenant in possession addendum to make it clear uh, that once uh, the uh, contract is entered into, uh, the buyer has the right to prevent the seller from modifying any leases uh, um, that have been uh, uh, agreed to. Uh, there are going to be some forms I'm just going to mention real quickly. Uh, in December, uh, they're going to um, have a revision to the seller instruction uh, to exclude from the MLS and days on market. That, that, that CAR form is going to closely resemble the form currently used at CRMLS. Um, they're going to also revise the summary of offer form. Uh, they are not going to be pursuing the seller common interest questionnaire. Again, these are very important forms. Um, it's important that you read over them. We'll do a more detailed newsletter, um, and uh, hopefully these forms, along with all of the other wonderful forms CAR has, are going to be valuable as you represent your buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm.